Hello, participants. I see we have some people joining us. We're going to get ready in just a few minutes. We have about five minutes to go before we kick off live. So thank you all for taking the time to join us this evening, afternoon, wherever you are. Um, and just hang out for a couple more minutes and we will be right back with you very soon. Two minutes is for huh? it's a five o'clock. Yeah, four minutes. Ooh, these kitchens look so great. Um, welcome those of you who are joining us who've just joined. We will get started in just about two minutes. So give us two more minutes and we will be ready to go. Right, I see we have a couple more people joining. We'll get started in one minute, one more minute. Thank you all for coming. All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Tasks 12 Days of Caribbean Cooking. I am so delighted to be here with you this evening. My name is Rayal Hamilton Romeo. I will be your host tonight, and I will be moderating the cooking demos by Chef Giovanni Meyer and also Chef Sweet. I am a publicist and marketer. I do just about everything. Um, I've worked in the travel industry. It's actually my first love. Right now I am doing PR for other things. I am a proud expat of Antigua and Barbuda living in the diaspora in, well, cloudy and rainy New York right now. Um, this evening we have two amazing chefs for you. As I mentioned, we have Chef Sweets hailing from the island of Anguilla and Chef Giovanni hailing for the twin island nation of Antigua and Barbuda, my countrymen. So, you know, not biased or anything, just saying. Uh, we will get started right now with Chef Giovanni and I will have him say hello in just a minute, but I wanted to share a little bit about Chef Giovanni and his background, just to give you some high level information on him. So Chef Giovanni is currently the chef de cuisine at Icon Inc. in Toronto, Canada. And he says this about himself, I'm a young disciplined chef who has learned a lot over the last eight years in the restaurant and food industry. I understand that it takes a lot of time and energy and hard work to be successful in the kitchen. 
and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get something done the correct way. I also understand the importance of running a business and making sure that COGS slash foods are steady and good quality food and a happy staff mean a lot to him. His desire is to become one of the best chefs in the world. And I am almost certain that what he's preparing for us tonight will definitely cement that status for him. Um, and it's been a lifelong dream of his to create cuisine that is influenced by his culture his experiences with um, various flavors through the training and the knowledge gained through his education and work. So Chef Giovanni, good evening and talk to the people about what you'll be cooking for us today. And um, let's get started. Just hear a little bit about what you're about and what you're interested in doing and unmute just to make sure that we can hear you. Unmute. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, welcome, welcome. Hi everybody, how are you doing? Um, I'm Gio, as I was formally introduced. I'm giving to you guys tonight lamb rack with a dark rum demi, polenta, some yogurt, pomegranates, and fresh microcrest. Um, just paying homage to the polenta slash fungi, as you call it, back home. Um, we're gonna do that today. A little bit cleaner, a little refined, some knife work, show you some butchery, and hopefully we get to have some fun today. Awesome. All right. So can you tell us why you chose this particular dish just in terms of a holiday meal? Everyone's eating ham and turkey and pork. And ever so often you do get to have lamb and it's treated like a delicacy. So I want to go back to doing that. Polento, aka fungi, is a national staple. You have to have it at Christmas. You have to have it every time, whenever you can. And it needs to be on the dining table. So I'm making sure that it's being done and done right. Um, we're getting to use English Harbor, homage again to home. We're using the Casket Madeira rum, which is aged for about five years. I mean, yummy. Okay. I'm juice that. So yeah. All right. So take us through uh, what you're going to do. Uh, so I've got my over here. the preparation. So the lamb okay. racks are from Ontario. I cleaned them up a little bit earlier today. Took most of the bones out. We're gonna cook them um, skin side down for about five to 10 minutes. So we're gonna start that very soon. And then I've got okay. my veg stock already made and chilling so that we can start making the polenta immediately because it's gonna take a while to cook. I don't want nobody to say I can't turn fungi. So I have to make sure we get it right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I just yes. tried to call me out last week on it, but it's okay. The fungi will get turned and it will be made properly with a wooden spoon and everything. So we're going to start doing wooden that first. Wooden spoon is a must. Okay. Yeah, I start off, I start off with let a Let me ask though. you this. Okay. Let me ask you this. There's quite the debate on the type of fungi that's made. Do you make yours plain with okra or do you do sugar fungi with raisins? I don't do the sugar fungi. I don't know what you're talking about. I've never had that before <laughs> in my life, <laughs> ever. Sugar that must just be in my family then. What? Well, it's not really a sweet. You just put raisins in it. I don't know. Maybe it was because we were kids and they wanted us to eat it. I digress. Okay, so what? sounds like you're doing plain fungi. Plain and fungi. how are you preparing your fungi? Um, veg stock, bring it up to a boil with the semolina in there. So you get a nice mixture and then keep beating it every five or 10 minutes so it doesn't get lumpy. Let that go for about half an hour, okay. then it should be good. Then we're gonna finish off with some butter. Um, okra is a very hard thing to find up here in Toronto. So mm -hmm. no okra today. I've got red sorrel okay. crust, kind of crust, and mint crust all going on top. Um, so yeah. Awesome. So we got one and a half liters of stock, just about. Mm -hmm. We're gonna pour about a 500 of semolina. All right. Baby nearby. This is going to be coming up to a simmer just now. Can't do it when it's cold. It has to be okay. hot and hot. Get it started then. So in the meantime, while we're waiting on that, we're going to show you how to clean pomegranates. You can get these home. They're great when they're fresh. Even when they're not fresh, I don't know if you did it as a kid, you just still eat the seeds when it's green. Lick a sour, but it's all right. Mm -hmm. So you cut the sides. Be very careful when you're doing it. You're this is one of my favorite things to see because I never get it right. 
Okay, so you follow the shape of the actual pomegranate. What you see, it's got edges. So you cut along the edge, and what happens is you take the top off, and that's what happens. Okay. Mm. Very pretty. I and you love got, how vibrant the seeds look. The, you know, and it's hit or miss because you never know if the fruit, the seeds are going to come out right until you cut it open. It's it's a big mystery. I love doing it at work because we use it all the time. So you follow these lines. Right. Mm -hmm. One, two, and it will get messy. It's a it's a very juicy fruit. It leaks the red stuff everywhere. So make sure you have towels to wipe everything down, gloves if you're worried, and then break it open. Boom! Love it. I feel like I can taste it. Like I'm literally salivating. I love pomegranate. <laughs> it's so good. I've already got some here. I just need to show you guys how it was done. So we got some seeds already red. Just gonna stay right here for a bit. Okay. We're gonna cut into a bit of a wipe. So Christmas time, we got spices, you've got clove and cinnamon and star and easy our fruit cake. It's everywhere. We can't avoid it, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got here is some clove. We're gonna put some peppercorns in here. Some fresh coriander seed, some fennel seed. Don't go crazy. Like maybe a quarter teaspoon of everything. Some cinnamon right. sticks. And right, we're gonna toast this. Now, by toasting it, you're essentially releasing the oils and the aromats from the natural spice. Okay. And this is the sauce that you're going to, this is so going to be part of the sauce that you're going to put on the yeah. lamb. So essentially, yeah, so I'm going to spice this, well, toast this, so the spices come out. Then we're going to pour the rum in there, reduce the rum all the way down to uh -huh. maybe a quarter, a quarter left. So we're going to reduce the 75% of the way. Then we're going to strain it and we're going to add it to this lamb sauce that I've got, which I prepared earlier as well. Essentially, I took all the shrimp okay. from the lamb bones and I made a stock with it. Um, there is the recipe there. It says to use beef, beef, beef stock. You could use the beef stock instead mm -hmm. of water just to help bring that extra body and extra flavor to your, to your stock. Okay. And while you're toasting those, can you tell us anything about your memories of Antigua and being there at the holiday time? I mean, I spent most of my life in Antigua. I only just left at 21 years old, so mm -hmm. I miss it. I miss home. I miss Christmas. I miss the rum. I miss the spice. I miss the cake. I miss the beach. I miss everything. And you know, it's, it was Christmas is, <laughs> is very busy and very exhausting because I come from two very big families, um, the Davises and the Myers. Mm -hmm. So we'd start family, start Christmas morning with small family members, mom, dad, grandparents, and then we do breakfast, and gifts, and then everyone would drink by three o'clock, everyone's passed out. And then me and my sisters mm -hmm. would leave from there, go to one family member's house, and that's where most of one side of the family is, and then we go by the Myers. The, house, the whole gang is there as well. And then by nine o'clock, we leave from there, and go by another best friend of ours. We'd have another lamb. So it was lamb and drinking all, all day. So by 11 o'clock, you, you're done. You're tired. <laughs> it was yes. a whole session, and you have to get Christmas, rest because boxing Christmas day, time is so. amazing. It's it's so fun. It's 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 not like carnival. It's it's so it's family oriented. It's homey. It's it's warm. It feels nice. So yeah, you can't smell it, but it smells amazing. Um, <laughs> we will take your all. word for it. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to get any real color on it. You don't want to burn anything. So you want to keep agitating it. Okay. And so it looks like you toasted it for about five minutes or so. Just about, not too long, on a super high heat to release the oils. Okay. And we're just going to leave this to go. This is going to reduce till it's almost maybe 125 mil, 250 mil, which I guess is a quarter of a cup. I don't remember the okay. conversions anymore. I haven't been in the US for a while. That's fine. No worries. Yeah. Um, All right. So the stock is hot. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to just start the initial whisking. So you're whisking while you're pouring. Does this help with uh, 
not getting any lumps or clumps this, of this, corn exactly meal. this is to help incorporate the, mo the moisture into the actual flour itself without getting those extra lumps Okay. And it will thick, it will thicken up. And then as she thickens up, you want to stop whisking. You're gonna to start to use the paddle, spoon, spatula. You know, but like mm -hmm. I said, when we're using the wooden spoon, we're going to beat the polenta <laughs> until it's ready. Okay. You see, all right. Already, so while that's going, up, right? yeah, yeah, it is really quickly. Down. And that's one of the reasons why you want to use hot water or hot stock to make sure yeah. that you can get it to thicken up pretty quickly. Yep. Okay, so while you are working on the polenta slash bungee, we're going to switch over to Chef Sweets really quickly to do an introduction, get started with his um, prep, and then we will be back in a few minutes. All right, Chef Sweets. Hi. Welcome. Good evening. How are you? I'm great. Getting ready. All right. Awesome. So we have Chef Sweets here, ladies and gentlemen. And in a minute, I'm going to ask him why he's called Chef Sweets. But his given name is Kelson Connor, and he hails from the beautiful island of Anguilla. Uh, he is a proud husband and father, and he currently works at the Ani restaurant where he's an executive chef. He also travels annually to some of the culinary capitals of the world to enhance, cultivate, and develop his techniques, which is awesome. Some of the places where he's traveled to include Thailand, personal favorite of mine, Taiwan, Sri Lanka, New York, Miami, Los Angeles, and the Dominican Republic. So, um, it says here in his bio that Chef Sweets creates dishes that are simple yet elegant, letting the essence of the star ingredients shine through. And he works to deconstruct recipes, reinventing them to suit his sense of style and flavor. And when not in the kitchen, he likes a good football game and he likes to be surrounded by family and friends and a nice plate of barbecue. So welcome Chef Sweets. How are thank you, you this evening? Me. Thank you for having me. Of course, me. Thank, thank you for joining us. So Chef Sweets says that he is going to make pork and more pork for Christmas. And as we heard Chef Gio say, most people usually have their Christmas ham. So talk about your take on this um, Caribbean staple and what you're planning to do for us this evening. So first of all, my name is Chef Sweets, everyone. Thanks for coming uh, to the lovely island of Anguilla via Zoom. Today we have, we were tasked with uh, incorporating Caribbean rums and local rums into our favorite recipes today. We're going to showcase Malibu, we're going to showcase Mount Gay, right? Uh, mm. And I'll just explain to you how I did that. We started with Mount Gay, we made a lovely brine, you know, with, with Mount Gay. We took some uh, half and half Mount Gay in water and uh, some spices like black pepper corn, star anise, some garlic, rosemary and thyme. Those are lovely flavors. That, that works well with the pork tenderloin. You see we have it here, it's been breaded for like two hours now. Uh, I put it in a shallow pan uh, just a while ago so, so you can see it really nice and pretty. Uh, but you, usually you want it submerged, right? And uh, the Malibu, we made a lovely, so to go with this uh, brine pork tenderloin, we made a pineapple chutney. And uh, you know, usually around Thanksgiving, Christmas time, you know, cranberry sauce is a big, uh, condiment for, for Christmas meals. So we did like a twist on that, right? Going back to my bio, I like to take classic uh, recipes and, 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 you know, put my spin on it. So I did a Malibu okay. pineapple chutney, right? Uh, to go with, to pair along with the pork, add some sweetness, some, some kick as well. Uh, we, we have some stuffing. So there's pork tenderloin, but there's also ham, like the ham shoulder that's smoked mm -hmm. and salted in the meat. So we took that ham and we, uh, we boiled it and we baked it and then we added it into a, a, a cornbread stuffing that we made, right? So, so we have those flavors and textures going on. We also have like a pork demi, right? As well, you know, to bring, we enhance more, more pork flavor into the dish. We have a cataloupe puree sticking with the roots of the Caribbean. Yeah, we have a, a sweet potato, right? Just as you would for Christmas or Thanksgiving, you, you know, you have sweet potatoes aside. So we brought that back into the fold 
you know, we have our bits and pieces of garnishes here and there. So, you know, as we get going, you'll see what's happening. Okay, that sounds good. So, so far, from a Caribbean standpoint, I've heard pork and more pork. I definitely heard the seasonings and the spices and then the rum. So we are right on target. So what are you going to do with the pork for us tonight? Okay, so for the pork, you know, usually when you brine the pork, you want to get, you know, you want to get that brine off. So what you do is uh, you move those rums over. You give it a good rinse, right? Okay. Just so we can, the, the brine is usually like half, half salt and sugar. So it's a bit, mm -hmm. bit strong. So you wanna rinse it off, right? And I have, this is my secret blend, right? I have it in my bag, I'll tie it up. It's a secret blend of spices, right? It's like black pepper, chili, garlic powder, onion powder, brown sugar, salt, you know, along those lines. Okay. And uh, what we're gonna like do, it. Yeah, what we're gonna do is uh, get the smoke going first. We're gonna pan sear it, but we're gonna hit it with some of this, these spices first, yeah? Okay. Just to add. And this is gonna help with the caramelization. It's gonna give it a good bark, right? Mm hmm And reinforce the flavors that surrounds it. Really and truly. I love this sugar, so. So versatile, you can put it on chicken, you can put it on, on okay. fish. And this is your um, concoction? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, you make everything from scratch here. And, on the and it's actually on private resorts, right? It's not a restaurant that I work at. It's a resort. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the, we have a collection of resorts in Angola, Thailand, Sri Lanka, the Dominican Republic. You know, that's where we're located. Okay. Angola was, the, Angola was the first, right? So we had a model, we had a model resort, if you will, of the others. Okay. This next time, get rid of this brain. Yeah, so want to come around? So what we're going to do is can see this pork kind of line lightly, right? You got to be careful. In which we do that because, like I said before, there's sugar in the rub. So what tends to happen if the heat is too hot, it will caramelize. It will caramelize too quickly, and then it will burn. You don't want to get too much okay. color, because then it will get a bitterness. And how long? How long will you be pan searing it for? Uh, it all depends. Maybe four or five minutes, because once I get it colored, it's, you know, all around. Then I'll add some more of those flavors that we that we brought into the brine, some thyme and rosemary. Okay. And butter, and we're gonna baste it. Right? We're gonna baste the, the pork and the line in the pot with the brown butter in the hobs. And then we're gonna stick it in the oven, get it at a nice medium well temperature, let it rest, and then we're gonna cut it and then take it from there. Yeah? Okay. Take it away, let's see. Yeah, let's wait for the uh and while you're doing that, can you tell us what um, what aspects of anguilla are you also bringing to this particular dish? Besides the spices and the rum, is there anything else that is like quintessentially anguillan that you can tell us has influenced no, this dish or the no, flavors or anything like that? Yeah, what I'll say that is unfortunately, you know, anguilla is like young island. You know, we have, you know, we've only existed for 50 plus years. You know, we don't have a deep, strong culture like many of the other islands do, most of the many other islands. So, you know, what we've, we've, we've had to rely on is a lot of other cultures, you know, that are present here on the island today. And hence why I'm doing what I'm doing today, you know, if you realize I'm taking a lot of um, American style, uh, classic techniques and incorporating what I'm doing here today, just putting my flavors from the Caribbean, and, and, you know, into it. So I'll say, you know, where I might say pineapple chutney is like a um, Caribbean, West Indian thing. You know, uh, it's not an Anguillian thing. We don't really have um, outside of peas and rice and fried fish, the Johnny Cakes. Mm -hmm. That's really, that's pretty much we can bank on. We don't really have like a deep rooted um, culture like most of the islands do. So, uh, right. That's what I'll say there. 
So okay. I, I mean, I definitely is. see the influence with the Mount Gay rum because that's Bayesian. So I like the idea of bringing all of that together. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, we used to have uh, private rum located in Angola. You know, mm -hmm. it used to be made in Angola, but uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, they moved to Guyana. So oh, okay. you know, if they were still present, I would, I would have used them, used the private rum instead of the Monge. But it's kind of hard to get at the moment. So Monge is like all over the place in Angola. We love Monge and Angola. So we're going to stick with that. We're going to show some awesome. love. To the All, right. All right. So, so I see we're getting started with the sear. Yeah. This is the most time consuming part. You know, cooking the pork. Like I said, you don't want to, every now and again, you just want to take a look at it. So it's going. You don't want too much oil in the pot. All right. Just enough. Okay. That surrounds the, the pork. And you see, I have it all tied up here. So it keeps it nice and straight and uniform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I cut it, I get nice medallions. But I'm gonna peel it. Okay. So it's functional and also um, aesthetic purposes for tying up the pork shoulder or the centerpiece of the pork that you have there. Yeah. So we're just gonna let it take its time and get color. And then once it's all colored all around, okay. we're gonna add the butter in the hob. From the kill the heat, because what happens with butter on how heat it tends to burn, and then that will get better as well. So you wanna kill the heat a few seconds before you add the butter. And then it caramelizes. Okay. Like it doesn't get to a month heavy so when the sun will burn and it doesn't get up. So you don't want that. So uh, we're gonna make it nice and slow with this process. Now, while that's um, searing there, can you tell us about your favorite aspect of Christmas in Anguilla? You know, it's, it's, you know, it's similar to what Giovanni said, you know. All, all the islands in the Caribbean, one thing we have in, uh, in, in common is, you know, hopping from one spot to the next, trying to be responsible as possible while you're drinking and eating, you know. Uh, but, you know, Family, 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 friends, <laughs> friends, friends, right? Hopping from one place to the next, mm -hmm. having a good time, whether it's the beach, whether it's uh, in someone's backyard, you know, with a grill or so forth. That's pretty much it, you know. We, but nightlife is everything here in Angola too, you know. When Christmas time, okay. we, the town, the town is, is lit up very much. It's, it's, it's very beautiful at night, you know. So we have like, every night we have like a different, uh, a different, uh, it's like a concert we put on every night with uh, the young, the young persons mm -hmm. come out, they do the acts, they do the, the rehearsals and so forth. We have some of the local bands, they come out and they perform. So, you know, we enjoy that as well, you know, but, uh, but definitely, definitely, uh, hopping, you know, coming around to the different spots to enjoy your liquor your and your music, for sure. Yeah, so, hopping for sure. So what I've just done is, Added the butter, right? In the okay. uh, the forms. And you realize the butter is, is melting slowly. You don't want it to melt too fast, like I said. Right? And then we're gonna, mm -hmm. we're gonna baste it. Baste it. You wanna put the hob on the pork. So when the, when the hot butter is poured over, you know, the, the flavor. And what benefit does that have? Just reinforcing the, the essence of the hops into the, the pork. You know, okay. Christmas time, you know, mostly sage is a, a common sage and rosemary is a common uh, is a common hop for around this time of the year, especially with green meats like this. Mm -hmm. So we're just staying true to that tradition, you know, showing some love to the meat. Okay. And once this is once I feel pretty good about this, I'll stick it in the oven to uh, finish off. Okay. And then how long will you have it in the oven baking? Probably 10 minutes, 12, 10, 12 minutes. Oh, yeah. oh that's not that bad. Yeah. You did say that the searing was like the most time consuming part. Well, 
the, the whole process is the most time consuming part. You know? Um, mm -hmm. That's why I did it first, really and truly, because you want to get you want to let it rest too once it's it's cooked. So you want to let it rest so the juices can chill out. When you cut it, you don't want the juices to to to, to leak out into your cut and go down to your plate. So that's what we took the, the opportunity to get rid of that first. Okay, sounds good. All right, so what's next? So we have the what we have here is the the pork sauce. And what I want uh -huh. to do is, you know, this is something that's made. So when the, the, I, sp I spoke about the ham earlier, when I incorporated it into the cornbread stuffing. I took the, mm -hmm. the ham stock and I added, I roasted some chicken bones, I roasted some pork bones, some leeks, some onions, some carrots. And then I added to the stock, the ham stock, and I reduced it all the way down with some tomato paste. Right? Okay. And that's giving you the, the pork juice. But what I also want to do is take some of the juices from the pineapple chutney and add to the uh, the, the Malibu pineapple chutney and add to the uh, to the pork sauce as well. So that would give it a bit of um, contrast, you know. Okay. Um, and how we, how we made this really and truly was we took spices like coriander, uh, cumin, turmeric, mm -hmm. ginger, and we toasted those, cinnamon and sinus as well. And then we add the Malibu and the glaze okay. apart. And then we added some uh, some white vinegar, or some cider vinegar actually, some brown sugar. And then we added the pineapples, fresh pineapples to it, and just let it cook down for a while, you know? You want it to get, so like a sweet and sour take, just like you would have with cranberry sauce, it's like a sweet and sour take mm -hmm. on it. And the spices in here is gonna marry so well with the pork as well. Okay, so I see Chef Gio, um, his polenta slash fungi is looking like it's taking shape. So we're going to flip back over to Chef Gio and we will back with you in a few minutes, Chef Sweets. Sure. All right, so Chef Gio, I saw that uh, your sauce there was coming together and you just um, strained out the cinnamon and the other spices and the rum sauce um into a container and i saw that you had like wax paper on top of the polenta so talk us through what's been happening uh, and what we can expect to the, see next the trick so it's called a cartouche um classically in french you take a piece of paper you cut it in the shape of a of a cone so you will fold the paper twice over and then you fold it again so you get a square mm -hmm. and you take the tip and you point it in between the middle of the part and the edge and you measure it and that edge, you'll cover the piece of paper. And then that's what you'll use to cover your um, polenta or any sauce that you're reducing that you don't really want to build a skin on. And the skin is really what helps, okay. is what causes that, those extra lumps that you don't really need. You know, so it can cook mm. and still steam without, I mean, you could use a lid if you really, really, really needed to, but um, in kitchens, lids are sometimes very hard to find. Um, so it's a very good practice to have to know it's a nice little hack. Plus, you look really cool and professional when you do it. I see. I'm definitely going to use that from now on. I have a couple of ideas of dishes that I can use that with. So I oh, learned yeah, something man. today. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah. anything. You can, and, and you know what? When you when you end up in the industry and you're, you're in the restaurant and you're making or serving polenta throughout service, that's what we do. We put the paper over it so that we can hold it in the water without it building the skin, without it drying out, and the product stays the same for a very long time. Okay. All right. So what's mm -hmm. next? Next is the sauce. We're going to see how this baby is. So we've got the lamb sauce from earlier today. Like I said, classic mm -hmm. mirepoix, brown it off. Take the lamb trim, brown that off as well. A little bit of tomato paste. Just get it going. So I reduced it down so it's super, super, super glassy. Um, the classic word for it is a demi-glass or a jus. So okay. Essentially, we're just going to pour this from, you see how much just reduced? Like it was, I see. It, it was this for nothing like that. I just added a little bit of more sugar, a little bit of sugar to it. Pour that in. Bum, 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 bum. 
Now, even though you're adding in the sugar, it's not going to make it like sweet, right? It's Super just sweet. for no. Well, it's just to balance it out. Okay. And then to, off to offset that sweetness, which I'm going to check just now, um, I'm going to add apple cider vinegar to it. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't seem to cut it. Not a lot. And it still keeps the same consistency. I see. Yeah, same consistency. I'm, I'm just gonna kill it with it, to be honest. It's good. It's, it, you know, if you reduce it and you want a specific consistency, you need to think of how much water or um, vinegar reduction or whatever it is you wanna add to help bring back the body that it's lost. So it's lost water and you're replenishing it with a liquid as well, right? So you have to keep that in mind when you're doing these sauces. If you reduce them too far and you want more body, you're gonna have to increase the water content. So you see you got a nice pouring consistency. If you really want to check it, do that. You see it doesn't run down. Almost perfect thickness. Mm -hmm. I'll put this back to hold. And now, yep, it's just gonna stay warm for a bit. We've got our lamb racks over here. I'm gonna finish with a little bit of black pepper. And then give them another five minutes and then we're gonna let them come to room time. It should be fully at room time by then. And we'll be able to cook it. It's okay. not very good to cook something from cold. You're better off taking it out five, 10 minutes before just so that the temperature can drop, well, raise. So that when it goes to the pan, there isn't that much of a differential in heat. Um, so that helps the, the cooking process, how to describe it, ease into it. So the temperature goes from very hot on the outside and it makes its way in slowly and it's not too harsh and doesn't get that super gray um, meat flesh from the inside that you see when it's cooked really hard and badly. I'm not sure if you've ever seen yes, have a really, yes, okay. yeah, so that gray, that gray that you see shouldn't be there. It's not supposed to be there. It should never be there. It's supposed to be a slow transition. And the key to that is just controlling the temperature, whether it's the temperature of the meat, the pan, anything. Mm -hmm. So now we just wait and Okay. Like, like, like Sweet said, you should drink responsibly, you know? <laughs> drink responsibly, guys. <laughs> I'm like the black sheep in my family, so I'm like the designated driver for everyone because Listen. I don't drink, so they can what? all drink. Oh, no, you yeah. poor thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah no. Or yeah, if no. I have it... a drink, it's at the beginning of the night, so I'm good by the end. No, when Sweet said drink responsibly, I said, mm, that's probably a good message to tell the people. <laughs> I, probably, I probably should have said that, but it's cool. It's fine. He beat me to it, so it's all right. Very, very good message. Okay, so we will come back in a few minutes to check on the lamb racks when they're yep. ready to begin. And yeah, we'll switch sure. back over to Chef Sweet and see what we're up to. I saw that he was straining something off as well. It looked like it was the sauce. So Chef Sweet, yeah. where are we? Yeah, so I was just straining the sauce up to get all the, the bits and pieces out. I'm just, just going to reduce it a little bit more because I've added some of the, the the juices from the pineapple chutney. So I'm going to let it reduce okay. a little bit more so it gets a little bit thick. And I was talking about mm -hmm. the stuffing earlier, the ham and cranberry stuffing, right? And I, I, I made like a yes. perfect dish of the stuffing and I've, I've cut it into these little these little rectangles, right? I have some pieces here already. You see like my Mr. Glass all laid out, right? Uh, so what you can see is I have, I took a, a nice cut of it and you can see like the chunks of ham, you know, inside and oh, the yeah, cornbread as well. I, I made it so you have like a nice crust on top as well, you know, for color and, and texture. Yeah, so, uh, you know, mm -hmm. sticking with the, the traditions of uh, Christmas stuff and it's like a, a side, a definite, definite side dish. And uh, going back to the, the Caribbean roux also, you know, we made a cantaloupe puree. You know, we took, what we did was made a roux. We made a roux for us, right? A roux is like butter in, in, in flour and uh, in shallots. And we sauteed those together and we waited, waited till they get nice and, and cooked the flour, taste out of the, the butter. And uh, we added some milk, mm -hmm. right? And then once that's cool, we took blanched spinach and uh, 
pureed with the with the, the roux. And what the roux does is is provide a nice silky, comforting feel to the spinach puree. You know, give it a nice velvety taste and feel to the to the mouth. And then we have the sweet okay. potato puree, sweet potato puree as well. But we took the not the, the Caribbean yams, the sweet potatoes. We took the the American yams. That's what we choose to Got use today for okay. this for this one. And then we have the pineapple chutney here also, which I explained. The, the the sweet potato puree is pretty much straightforward. You just you cook them till they're soft, you strain it off. You want to blend it with a you know with a touch of the, the same water. Add some uh, some spices to it. Mm-hmm. You know, those curry, those Christmas spices like cinnamon and nutmeg. A little bit of butter, touch of um, of, uh, of milk, you know, and uh, wait till it gets nice and smooth, and then you go from there. What I did was make a. I wanted to make a, you know, it's before Christmas is fall, right? And you tend to have these delicate leaves that fall off of the tree. So I have this beautiful mold that I bought not too long ago, and I made these potato twins using the mold. It's to 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 create this this leaf like image right so this is this is edible it's made with potatoes so we're gonna garnish the plate with this as oh, well wow. as well as some uh yeah as well as some uh some lately sarah leaves and, and cilantro micro cilantro as well that is really cool and i will say like looking at that um kalalu puree it's giving me very much pesto vibes um, and that's an interesting take on having some greens at the table. I'm very curious to see how it's all going to come together when you plate everything. Yeah, so, so what I, my, my concept for today was to really take, you know, um, rustic family style meals, uh, family style meal, and present it in an elegant, luxurious, fine dining setting, right? Took everything, mm-hmm. made it smaller, made it more elegant. And I'm gonna play it as such, right? Because usually around Christmas time, you know, everything is like in big portions and big dishes scattered all over the counter, which is fine. It's a family setting, but for what I do here at the resort, we do it a little bit more on the fine dining stuff. So I wanted to pay some respects to that. I wanted to, to show people that hey, you can you can turn our Christmas meal into a nice fine dining uh, dish. So that's my uh, challenge here today. Absolutely. Oh, okay. And we heard Chef Sweets mention that he has those um, sorrel leaves. For those, for those of you who don't know, sorrel is the, um, comes from the hibiscus flower. So those are those leaves that you see there. Um, so while you're, I see you're taking, did you take the pork out of the oven? Yeah, I, I wanted to check the temperature on it, you know, give it a little oh, okay. bit. Take that about another two to three minutes in the oven, and then we take it out okay. and let it rest. All right, so while we're waiting, can you tell us how you got the name Chef Sweets? <laughs> you know, it's funny. You know, most people like, okay, tell me you can make sweets very good. Like, you know, candy and this sauce and stuff. But I'm like, mm-hmm. I can. However, it's, that's not where Chef Sweets came from. It has nothing to do with food. Unfortunately, it has everything to do with, you know, my growing up as a, as a rookie in the kitchen. You know, when you just come into the kitchen and you're like, the rookie and you got to prove yourself and you know there's always this kitchen clown you know you went to school you had this class clown there was this kitchen clown when i went to, to uh, my first job capsule Rock hotel and i was 17 years old it was this guy named shaman but we call him sassy because he was like the guy responsible for making all the sauces and so forth so that's what his nickname sassy but he gave he he would name everyone else you know that was his that was his way of having fun. He would give everyone their, their nickname. So it was my turn. I came in, I was fresh. They needed to, they needed to give me a name. Kelson wasn't going to cut it. I said, I was like, okay, we, you know, sometimes you got to let things play out, see what he does, see if he made a mistake, see, if, you know, whatever it might be. If he looks a certain way, if he behaves a certain way, we'll give him a name based on that. They said, okay, look, something about you, we're going to call you Sweet Lips. Like lips, like sweet lips, like, okay. lips. Mm-hmm. like why, why are you calling me sweet lips? Like, you know, the girls is like, like, okay, cool. But it was too, pushed it too much for me. It was too feminine. It was whatever, you know, I was like, nah, that ain't gonna call it for me. But like, nah, nah, you're gonna stick. But then I was like, okay, look, we're gonna dumb it down. We're gonna just call your chest sweets. Is it got something, they got, they said something got to stick with sweet for you. So that was got 15 it. years okay. ago, 16 years ago. So 
it was really to do with these lips that I have uh, today, but um, they, they took the lip off and just call me Chef Sweet. So that's, that's okay. it's not as, uh, Interesting. as, as exciting as, as you would think. Okay. I, I was wondering, I was like, do you do like pastries? Do you have a sweet tooth? But okay, no, I understand. <laughs> I give nicknames to people too, so I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I totally get it. Um, so we will be back in a couple of minutes to check on the pork. We're going to head back over to Chef Gio. And while we transition to Chef Gio, I will say we do have someone who um, knows Chef Gio well and wants to say hello. So special guests, can you turn on your camera so we can see you? Hello. <laughs> oh. Hello. Hey, yes, yeah, so right now we have Alex Grimley. He's from Sheer Rocks Restaurant in Antigua. Welcome. Thank you. And Do excuse the I dog will bark. say, um, that's okay. I'm hoping my dog doesn't start barking, so I totally get it. Um, I will say I do have a connection to Sheer Rocks. Apart from being from Antigua and going to that restaurant, my dad actually got married there back in 2012 and that's where the wedding reception was. So I have a huge affinity for Sheer Rock myself. Um, so I'm um, really happy that you're here, but. So Gio would have been but cooking then that, in, in. You said Gio? I said Gio would have been cooking then back in 2012. He was still oh, there. Oh, at that point there. in 2012. Ooh. I wonder yeah, if you made I, our I dinner that sure evening. Until the end of the year. Oh, okay. That is really cool. Yeah, they got married in August. So you probably were our chef at that time. Very cool. For sure. The island is small I would, for I was... you who are listening. So as you can tell, Chef Gio worked at Sheer Rocks, which Alex owns, and um, it was one of his first jobs. So tell us a little bit about Sheer Rocks. I know that it is very well known. It's won a lot of awards, but what can you tell some of the advisors who are on with us this evening, especially um, about the restaurant and just the Caribbean at Christmas? Hey. Um I mean, Sheer Rocks has always been a restaurant. It's, it's 10 years old now. We actually just celebrated our 10th birthday earlier this month. And um, we always had the philosophy of very much trying to have a Caribbean soul to the restaurant. But the, the concept was Mediterranean, sort of my background in cooking. I'm a chef originally by trade. And so we always supported okay. local veg, always uh, worked with lots suppliers on islands so we really built um, a sort of institution in a way that people came and really could feel that it had that Caribbean vibe about it but it still had that sort of mm -hmm. lovely Mediterranean style that I think was you know at the time associated with that sort of level of food I think these days it's changed a little bit and the Caribbean has a much better reputation for food than sort of 10 years ago and uh, that keeps getting better every year um, it's been a special year for us. I mean, it's a bit of a roller coaster year for everybody, but um, we were also mm -hmm. named the best restaurant in the Caribbean by Carib Journal earlier this year. So we still sort of hold that title. That is lovely awesome. for our um, it's the third time we've won the award. We've won best restaurant with other sort of nominations before, but it's the first time a Caribbean mm -hmm. Journal probably the most prestigious one because they actually come and inspect rather than, you know, it's not a popularity contest. Uh, like some of the Got others. it. Okay. So, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And um, yes, yeah, so we're now gearing up for an exciting sort of Christmas season, really, where we try to get that perfect blend between people who want a traditional sort of Christmas and people who are trying to escape a mm -hmm. traditional Christmas. We try to get that balance quite nicely with the menu. So there's always, you know, things that you feel comfortable with. And then there's always a few things that are exciting and different as well. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Awesome. So it sounds really interesting. So for those of the advisors who are listening, um, as Alex was saying, you kind of get that blend between people who want a traditional Christmas and those who are escaping it and Sheer Rocks can give you a little bit of both. So it's kind of 
feeding those dual personalities, but also keeping some level of authenticity. Absolutely. That's absolutely right. And what would you say um, would be your favorite thing about being in Antigua in Christmas or just Christmas in the Caribbean on a whole, just in terms of the atmosphere or from a food standpoint or anything really? Um, I, think, I think the first, the simple answer to start with is the weather. I mean, it's the literally perfect temperature here. It's nice and cool at night, but it's lovely and warm during the day. I mean, we, we say cool at night, of course, when you've lived here as long as I have, but, you know, tourists still find it warm. But it's, um, it's just the perfect weather. And, you know, it's also where we get great fresh fish. Um, you know, lots of mm -hmm. tourists come back. The island's really buzzing and busy, hopefully, anyway, post-COVID. It's all a bit odd this year. But, yeah, I just, I just love... I can't stand the cold. So, for me, the absolute best thing about the Caribbean at Christmas is, is the weather. I'm with you on that. That's the one thing I miss about living stateside, um, the warm weather. I hate the cold and I hate the snow, um, but awesome. So tonight, I don't know if you can see what Gio's making. He's making um, lamb racks and polenta or fungi as we say in Antigua. Um, is this something that you could see served at Shirox in some type of combination or a different iteration? Absolutely. I think that um, possibly a dish that has been on the menu, it's, well, sorry, not the same dish, Jesse's stolen it, which he clearly hasn't. But um, no, we've definitely, <laughs> polenta, ham rack, you know, is definitely and, uh, a compliment. Have a in all the food, but the shine on the demi glace there is most impressive. So if you're cooking at home, I can imagine that he's been making this stock and about two days now, fiance now I imagine. <laughs> awesome. Um, so Gio, what can you tell us about what you're doing now in terms okay. of the lamb? So Thank you so I much, Alex. Pan, I got the pan super hot, a little bit of oil, oh. not too much. Uh -huh. um, got the lamb already seasoned, so skin side down. All right. Once you get the initial here on the meat, you want to drop the temperature a little bit, add a little butter so you get some form and action. Mr. Grimley would agree with okay. me on that. Add some thyme, bay leaf, and you just keep basting it. So as I'm going through the process, you'll see everything. We don't really want to move around the lamb too much. You kind of want the meat to kind of fat to caramelize. Um, so we're just going to leave it here to go for a little bit, you know? And if you're ever wondering okay. where it's going to be staring, what you do is you put your hand on the meat, and you can actually feel the bubble. Like, as, as crazy okay. as it sounds, you can feel the bubble of the sear happening underneath the lamb coming through and you can feel it on your fingers here. So once you, once that is no longer happening, you essentially sear it outside and seal everything off. And at that point you can drop the temperature okay. and just get the basting and everything. Okay. And is this gonna be, um, are you gonna do the lamb well or what sort of temperature are you after um, in terms most of Most Antigans will not eat the type of lamb, lamb I'm gonna cook. It's gonna be medium real. <laughs> Okay. You know, it's a normal thing back home. Like, and they, you're, you're not going to eat it if you can see the blood. Um, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, it's, I respect the product a lot. I, I care too much about it, and I can't do any justice to it by overcooking it. It, it needs to be cooked medium. It's medium if you're, if you're wary of the blood. Um, and it also depends on how long you want to cook it. So I'm going to cook mine for about eight, eight minutes. Uh, four minutes on each side. I'm going to keep baking it throughout that process so the heat is being spread evenly. Uh, so come out at medium rare. I'll let it rest for a little bit. And when we start plating up everything, I'll give her a quick flash again, get some more heat on it so it's not cold, and we'll serve it up. All right. So we will be back at you in a couple of minutes. I see that Chef Sweets has taken the pork out of the oven. It looks like we're ready to slice. Um, you took yeah. off the string that you had binding it. So Let's hear what we can expect next. Looking yeah, good. So, you know, like you mentioned, it's ready. It's ready to slice. I'm gonna take this piece and give it a taste. All right. See how it's doing. It's really good. Oh wow! Yeah, you that head about, tilt at the back lets us know. You know what I love about Brian? Brian allows. What's that? For 
when you when you when you brine your meat, see all see all pretty that looks perfect. Yes, and see it's very on. moist on the inside. Too. Very moist. Brining allows to, for your meat to keep that nice moistness. You also want to let it rest. Okay. Like I mentioned, you had you had to let it rest for a while. Otherwise, you mm -hmm. lose that uh those juices, right? So uh, I'm gonna begin plating, if you will, real. Uh, right? We're gonna get we're gonna get a little creative with the plating style here. So we're gonna start with the with the uh, the cantaloupe puree, right? We're gonna start okay. with a nice healthy dollop here. We're gonna take our fancy spatula and just come across like this, right? I'm so excited and I don't even eat meat. Uh, this looks so good. You don't eat meat? Whoa. No, I'm practically vegan at this point, but Whoa. it looks amazing. <laughs> and then we're gonna come with a sweet potato puree. We're gonna take one of the stuffings, the ham stuffing. Okay. All right. Mike with some more the cataloupe array. You know, those gifts just line them up side by side. Come back with another stuffing. All right. So persons at home who want to do a plate, similar plate and style can easily do, do this. Right? It's just putting everything across the line, you know, one mm -hmm. by one, you know, in a straight line. I love the, the colors. It just makes it really come alive. Yeah. And then we're going to take the pineapple chutney, all right? And just lay that right here. That's like the bed. This is like the foundation for the uh, the pork tender line, all right? OK. Next, we're going to rest the pork right, right on top. Give it some elevation. And again, remember I spoke about, you know, bringing, you know, that fine dining feel to, you know, Christmas meal. That's that's the whole objective here today. You know, that's what I love to do here at the Ani Prairie Resort. You know, we take, you know, what would be considered, uh, you know, a classic. A tarnish the... Yeah, and just... Give it a little respect, show, show some uh, technique and creativity, you know, where that is concerned. So we'll add these bits and flowers, you know, this, the baby sorrel. Are you, are you it seeing? very pretty. And for... Are you seeing very well? The... Yes, no, it looks really, really nice. I love how the colors are coming together and I feel like the flavors are just as um, mouth watering as well. Um, for those of you who are on, sorrel is a drink that's made from the hibiscus uh, plant. So the leaves that Chef Sweets are using are the hibiscus leaves. And we do drink sorrel at Christmas time also. So it is kind of like paying homage in another way to those Caribbean flavors that are all coming together. Exactly. And then we have our sauce. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So similar to, to Gio, I have a, a pork demi here. All right. Mm -hmm. He has a lamb demi. I have the pork. You know, this is like, this would be like the gravy. Your turkey or your, your chicken or whatever. You know, so this replicates. This would be in place of your, your gravy. And then we spoke that about- That looks absolutely beautiful. We spoke about the leaf earlier, you know, uh -huh. talk about the fall time, you know, when everything falls off the tree, the dead leaves, you know? So that's what we're gonna do here. Just add a little bit of um, that to the, to the plate. That looks amazing. We're definitely gonna yeah. need pictures, by the way. Um, but yeah. this looks absolutely beautiful. I love the plating and like you said, it's pretty simple, but it looks very um, 
ornate. So it's easy for you to replicate at home if you want to try this. Uh, and it looks like it tastes amazing. And what sure kind is. of beverage, alcoholic or non-alcoholic, would you pair with this? Listen, to me, in Angola, mm -hmm. rum punch is a must. A rum punch is a must. Okay. Hey, rum, punch okay. Goes, rum, rum punch goes with anything, really and truly. You know what I'm saying? It's an easy, accessible drink. Anyone can make it at home. You know, it's a mixture of juices like guava, pineapple, orange, monkey rum, you know, uh, you know, myers and so forth. You know, so uh, it's a it's a it's a really easy drink to make. But uh, again, I, I think rum can go very well with our with, with the Christmas and festive seasons. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, Chef Sweets. This looks absolutely delicious. I can smell it coming through the screen. And like I said, I don't eat meat, but my mouth is literally watering and it looks absolutely beautiful. So we have here the pork with the um, pork sauce and we have some pureed sweet potato as well as pureed kalalu and the cornbread and um, pork stuffing as well. Thank yes. you. With the pineapple All right, chocolate. so we're gonna go back and the pineapple chutney, yes, sorry, I forgot that one. Ooh, the sweet and sour flavors coming together. Thank you. We will be back in a minute to say goodbye, but before we do, we're gonna head back over to Gio and take a look at where we are. He is turning the fungi with the wooden yes. spoon and I see the lamb in the pan, it looks amazing. All right, now to finish the fungi, we're gonna add a knob of butter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I say a knob. Okay, a I know. <laughs> <Quite a bit. laughs> All right. Work it in. And are you going to do the traditional rolling it in a bowl or are you going to serve it a different way? I'm going to serve it on the side of the plate. Um, I will not be serving it in okay. the bowl. How do you guys So the as you can your... see, Turn in fungi gives you muscles because you have to have a strong arm to be able to get it turned well and not get the lumps in. It's a skill and an art that most Antiguans master very early in their lives. Do you know what's funny? I've been here. Pre Shirox, I had never turned fungi before in my life. Went to Shirox and ended up going on the menu. And I guarantee you, I have made more fungi in my life at Shirox than I have made ever in my life outside of Shirox. <laughs> That is hilarious. And but yes, as Chef Gio said at the... Oh, even like a, like a pot like this. Oh, it sorry, a, go ahead. A decent size <laughs> pot, and that was big. Yeah. Bungie is definitely a staple in Antigua, um, and especially around the holidays, um, you usually see it all the time. Oh, man. Yeah, it's plenty of work. <laughs> <laughs> so the lamb. All right, so it looks like the lamb is almost done. Yep, lamb is almost done. A couple more minutes, maybe a minute or two. We're just gonna let it rest. Now, resting allows the meat to relax, allows them all the blood and everything else that's excess to come out. This is why I've got this tray here with the blue napkin. Um, as soon as you come okay. out, I'm just gonna let them sit for a little bit. Let's we'll talk about the yogurt mm -hmm. sauce quickly. And then we're going to plate her up. All right. Sounds awesome. And as Chef Gio said, he's making the lamb medium rare. Yeah, medium rare. Okay. All right. So the yogurt sauce. Talk to us about that. Yogurt sauce. All right. Uh, it's a very simple ingredient that does a lot. Uh, I've realized over the last couple of years okay. I've been doing Mediterranean Middle Eastern food. Um, I got yogurt and sour cream because in the restaurant we use roughly 36% milk fat yogurt and it's pressed. Uh, okay. I can't get that in grocery stores. So I got 2% uh, yogurt with 14% sour cream and I split them 50-50. Mm -hmm. it's, it it's so sp it's spreadable and nice. The yogurt has a little bit more of a grit to it. The sour cream is a lot smoother. So I essentially just did that okay. just to help bring the balance to the yogurt. And are you using like a Greek yogurt or is it just like your regular uh, one of the milk yogurt? I'm using a Greek yogurt. 
Okay. So, a little plate here, spatula. Mm -hmm. The racks are coming off. They're gonna cool for a bit. So you see that um, it's essentially you got that beautiful golden caramelization all over, right? Yes, the color is absolutely beautiful. Oh. Yeah, so let that let the meat relax for a second. Um, we're gonna take the yogurt, just a nice spoonful. All right. Grab your offset spatula. You want to start being all fancy and everything in the kitchen at home, you should get one of these. They're very small, they're nice, they're handy. They do great things. Okay. Okay, so I'm seeing similar techniques coming through here. Oh, for sure. I've got a pomegranate here, so we should get all the garnish and everything ready, you know? Mise en place, she put in place. Okay. All right, so. I'm very excited. All right, so, so far we have the yogurt on the plate. It looks like the fungi is up next. Fungi is coming up right now. Right, right now. Adding one more tiny piece of butter. I was gonna add cheese to your but and I said, you know what? It's not on TV enough, so <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> and while you're um, getting the fungi ready, what would you say you would pair with this in terms of a beverage? A beverage. Whether um, alcoholic or non-alcoholic. You know, very much like Angola sorrel is a thing. I don't think you can stop that from happening. It's standard. Mm -hmm. um, and yesterday they had as well ginger beer. It's another good thing to have. If you want to get a little bit more yes. fancy, I actually, funny enough, I've got a bottle of Beaujolais Village, um, 2019 Louis Chalot, which I didn't know Alex was going to be here, but was also in the restaurant. And it's one of my favorite wines. Okay. Very nice. Okay. All right. Oof, I'm tired. Right up. <laughs> Where are you see me? <laughs> All right, I hope for that. All right, so. Chefing is over. hard work, people. Oh man, okay. it's exhausting. Make sure you put a cloth on your countertop if you're gonna go from stove to countertop. You don't want to damage it or crack it, you know, especially if it's marble or something, you know? Make a nice little big yeah. spoonful. Okay. That looks great. Mm -hmm. Give her a little bit of a, a little white, make it nice, or make it twice. You tr tr you're, trying to, you're trying to impress your family members during, during Christmas, you know, so take the time, get the right tools, make the effort. Okay, this is our lamb. Oh, you're gonna cut it, okay. Oh, yep, 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 you're going to cut her. Uh-huh. Okay. Not too bad. There is a little bit of blood. Just give it a quick dab. It'll be all right. Okay. Um, that that also has amazing color on the inside. A few pomegranates here or there. Now, the reason I added yogurt and pomegranates is because you need something to cut that richness. Planta is fattening. Okay. Lamb is also fattening. It's very, it's all rich, especially the sauce, also rich. Mm -hmm. You need something to cut that. So the best thing to do is to use an acid. We've got a demi here, a lamb demi with some apple rum, apple cider. Oh, apple yeah, there we go. Delish. That looks beautiful. Take the time. Some fennel. Fennel goes really well with lamb. We got mint as well. And some sorrel. Mm -hmm. And this looks great. Mm. The colors on this are popping as well. Contrast, man. And we're and also going to need pictures of this too, Gio. This looks amazing. And there you have it. Christmas on a plate. All right. So we Christmas on a plate, literally. 
thank you so much, Chef Gio and Chef Sweets. So um, I'd love for you to share your social media handle so people know where to find you so that they can continue um, looking at all of this amazing food porn on social media. So Chef Gio, where can people find you? You can find me at Half Breed Trini on Instagram. Uh, my food page is Pinch of Black Salt. That's it, okay. yeah. All right, and Chef Sweets, where can people find you? If they're gonna be on Facebook, they're gonna go at either Kelston Connor, which is K-E-L-S-T-O-N-C-O-N-N-O-R, Kelston Connor, or mm -hmm. Chef Sweets. Either one is fine. Okay. If they're gonna go on, if they're gonna go on Instagram, you're gonna type in Ani Chef Axa. A-N-I, Ani Chef Axa. A-X-A, right? And that's where awesome. you'll find me. And I'll see you there. All right, sounds good. Um, I think we have a couple minutes. If anyone has a question that they want to ask, drop it in the chat and I will ask our chefs. So I'm giving you a couple minutes to get your questions in there. We're getting lots of bravos. Um, well done. A couple of big up yourselves and outstanding. <laughs> a lot of people want to taste these dishes. Yeah, I wish they could. Oh, trust me. <laughs> I know, that would be awesome. <laughs> um, they, abso they absolutely agree. And for everyone who's participating, um, like I said, I don't eat meat and I'm literally tempted to just like lick the plate. They look absolutely delicious. Okay, I don't see any questions coming through. Oh wait, one question. Someone says, does Chef Gio ever plan on opening a restaurant in Antigua? Mm, I would love to. I got, I got to give Alex some competition. I'd love to open a restaurant. Looking for investors. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. So you hear that? He's looking for investors. So get your investor friends together. Um, we have another vegetarian who also said that uh, she is looking her lips as well. Lots of Christmas vibes coming through. Um, and overall, just kudos to you both. Thank you so much for being here with us this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, you. you heard where you can find both of our chefs on social media. And hopefully you will be eating these dishes. And those of you at home with our chefs, hopefully they get to sample these as well. And they can yeah, brag to us um, how well, well right now. <laughs> Yes, yes. Good, good <laughs> for you, fiance. <laughs> and hopefully <laughs> Chef Sweets, your family, gets to taste this as well. I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pleasure. All right. Thank Thanks you all, everyone. Nice we really uh, appreciate it. Okay. So. okay. From, uh, from Travel Advisor Sign the Caribbean, I just wanted to hop in and to thank everyone. First of all, our chefs were simply amazing. Um, you know, yesterday we had two seasoned veteran chefs. Today we brought you the younger chefs and boy did they pack some great flavors some some amazing food i want to thank all of our travel advisors for joining us um we are delighted that we had so many of you um deciding to spend your evening with us as we count down to um christmas and of course for many of you and of course your clients uh, we just cannot make it to the caribbean this year so we, we've decided to do a virtual tour uh, let me remind you that tomorrow we have two more amazing chefs. Tomorrow we're going to Curacao, and then we're also going to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So don't miss, we have two female chefs tomorrow, and they're amazing chefs. So tune in tomorrow, same time. Um, it's going to be 90 minutes. Grab your drinks, bring your meal, and come hang out with us. Same time tomorrow. Thanks to all our travel advisors. Send the link to your clients. Let's get this kitchen filled up. Let's bring some warmth of the Caribbean to um, your home so you can recreate your own Christmas memories. So thanks for joining us and we look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow. Have a nice evening, everyone. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rial. Rial, I didn't thank you. Of you did course. an amazing no job. No worries. <laughs> you certainly did a great job. And thank you. Alex happy to well. happy to help. Yeah, Alex Grimley, he had to jump off, but thank you know, we, we're grateful that he could take the time to come and spend some time with us. So um, you guys have some great food. I hope you have someone to help you um, you know, enjoy that great food. I wish I was there. Amazing. But um, <laughs>
thanks to everyone. I see we have a few comments before we go. Can we, we still have some time. What an amazing initiative. Thank you. Um, oh wait, there's one question. Someone yes, is asking, can hummus be made without tahini? Yeah. Of course. And how is it made <laughs> without tahini? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> Dig in so I heard a guess work. and I heard it, of course. So hopefully that answers your question to the person who submitted that anonymously. Okay, great. Well, guys, again, thank you so much. We actually finished on time. Real, you really managed the time well and did an amazing job. And so we covered everything. I used to work on airline. <laughs> That's right. That's so I'm used to right. an on-time operation. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All righty. Well, I, uh, again, All right, everyone. have a good night. And we'll see you hopefully back tomorrow. Come back. St. Vincent and the Grenadines in Curacao. Let's take a virtual tour. <laughs>